of the virtual prayer ministry. Um, our guest speaker for this week, um, Dr. Clifford, Clifford May. And I have said to you at the beginning that we will uh, introduce him. We will get to know him in bits and pieces as the, as the week unfolds. Um, Dr. Main is a graduate of Oakwood University with a BA in theology and psychology. He's a recipient of an MS degree in counseling psychology from the University of Rochester. And um, he holds a Doctor of Divinity degree from CICA International University um, in New York. And like we said yesterday, Pastor Main serves in the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists um, in the capacity of steward, stewardship director um, since last Sunday. Dr. Main, once again, welcome to the virtual prayer ministry. Um, and we look forward to you continuing to unfold this theme that you excited us about yesterday, uh, made for more. Um, and we trust that you will share with us what God has entrusted to you. So over to you, Dr. May. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, this day, we just want to welcome you. Thank you so much. Uh, my last name is pronounced Mani, M-A-N-I-E is Mani. All right, thank you so much for this privilege. Let's, let's go straight to the world. Last night, we started by saying that God had entrusted us on, on creation week, God had entrusted us with all of his creation for our theme text, our theme uh, passage to us that God placed all of his creation under our feet, meaning that we were made as gods over all creation that God had placed on our feet here on this planet. That means God had given us the ability to call things into existence. And uh, we talked a little bit about it last night. Tonight, uh, our subtopic, I think last night's subtopic was the intention, intention for creation. And tonight our subtopic is we were included. We were included. Let us pray. Father in heaven, uh, speak to our hearts even now in Jesus' name. Amen. We were included. Uh, let us go to the New Testament, and I will be reading from the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 8, and say, starting from verse number 15. For we have, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But we, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, join heirs to Jesus or with Jesus Christ. Join heirs with Jesus Christ. We were included as well. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we want to uh, drill down this week is the fact that the relationship that exists between us and our creator and our maker is a symbiotic relationship, one that has been distorted over the years by, by theologizing, whereas we believe that God is so holy and he's all the way up there in his holiness, and we are so unholy, we are all the way down here, and because of that, every time we go to God, we want to pray, we ask, we do everything to invoke the spirit or to have God, convince God to come down. By, by the way, all along, God has been trying to show to us the oneness that he has with us. Because from the beginning, he poured himself into us. He breathed into our nostril. We talked about that last night. And here in the New Testament, Paul got it. Paul is the one who was saying, I said, listen, folk, we are no stranger to God. We are not slave to God. We are, we are not in bondage that we may be fearful, but rather we have been adopted as children in the family of God. And, and not only that, he didn't stop there, but he said that if we are children, therefore we are heirs. Heirs mean we have the entitlement. We are entitled to everything that belongs to our father, also belong to us. And then he went on to say, as if you didn't understand what I just said, he said, 
I'm going to make it clearer. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ, which means whatever Christ is entitled to, you are also entitled to it. So if Christ can ask the Father anything and the Father gives it, you also have the ability to ask the Father anything and he will give it. Oh, I, I, when I read that, it makes me to, to I, I, there is a feeling that I cannot explain because this truth, this truth is so deep that it makes me to understand that God, once you know that God is within you and everything you do is God's doing, if you put your trust in God and know God for yourself, he will use you for his glory. And that is why we were created. We were created to be his ambassadors here on this planet. Paul again said, now listen to what Paul said in Galatians 5.20. He said, we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. Christ lives in me. Notice the words that we have been using. Christ lives in me, God in you. If Christ is living in us, and we believe that Christ can do nothing, can do, can do nothing, I mean, cannot fail in doing anything, if we believe that Christ is able to do just about anything but fail, if we believe that, why is it that we always limit that possibility when it comes to ourselves? It is because, as we said last night, because the enemy put us in this bondage for 4,000 years, that even after Jesus came and set us free from the bondage, some of us are still behaving as if we are still in the cage. We are fearful. We, we, we don't come boldly. Paul said, if you know what I know, you will come boldly before the throne. You come boldly because this is your father and everything that he has is yours. Just as Jesus is the son and Jesus is entitled and Jesus can claim whatever he has. It's not about coming to beg God to do something for us that we do not have. God has placed everything on our feet. In 2 Peter, 2 Peter 1, 1 chapter, chapter 1, verse 3, Peter said that God, listen today, God has given you all things as a pertain to life and godliness. In other words, there is nothing that God left out. All things have been given to you pertaining to life and godliness. So nothing you can look around for. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, he said that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Oh, I don't know what part of all you do not understand. So if you are blessed with all spiritual blessings, that means everything is in your hand. What does, but pastor, what does that mean? Oh, here's what it means. It means that everything that we see with our eyes here today, once upon a time was not here, including yourself and myself. We did not exist once upon a time. We came from the invisible. It was out of the spiritual that the physical appeared. And in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 3 said that the things that we see with our eyes, the physical things, were made from the things that we cannot see with our eyes, which means spiritual things. So if you have been blessed with all of the material from which the physical come, then you need to understand that you have that power within your, your reach. That is what Christ said, if I go, I will come again. In fact, if you believe in what I do, Christ said, not only will you do and duplicate what I do, but you will do more than what I'm doing. That's Christ. That's the me. He said, you will do more than what I have done. Jesus would never make such a statement if it was not true. But why is it that we don't even believe that? Do you believe that God cannot do anything? The Bible says, we understand the psalmist said that he spoke and it's too fast. He commanded 
And it happened, it came to being. Everything that God said, it happened. And God gave us the same ability. If only we were to know the importance of our words from the moment forward, we will be, we will be careful how we speak the words that we speak. Isaiah 55 verse, verse 11, God said in there that my words will not come back, will not return to me void. Once I speak it out of my mouth, it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish and it will come to me. And well, if God can do that and God pump his breath into you, that means that the words that you and myself speak on a daily basis is God's word. The thing you don't realize is where you are today in your life was created by you. All right, let me stop a little bit. Where you are, everything that you have become in this life was created by you. You did not know that. You didn't know that when you are speaking in foul words, you are sending messages to the creation that God has placed under you. And creation understand that you are their God. So just how we listen to the voice of God, God's creation listen to what we say. And one thing about the creation, it does not understand when you are joking. That's why when you are angry with your children, you don't need to call their names. Be careful where you call your kids because whatever you say, it will come to pass. Our words are powerful. As ambassador, the U.S. ambassador in South Africa and the South African ambassador in the United States will never say anything contrary to what their governments say. So whatever they say when they are here, it is okay with their government. They are representing their government. So when you and myself speak on earth, Last night we learned that we were the highest creator being on this planet. Therefore, God said, do not bow down to any graven image because when you bow down to any graven image, you are literally bowing down to something that is lower than yourself. And the only thing we need to bow down to is to God. Why? Because in Psalm 8, our, 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 our theme test said that we were made a little lower, not than the angel, but than God himself. So if we're going to worship, we have to worship God because he's the only one who is higher than us. And that is why when the angel came and, and John tried to bow down, the angel said, oh, no, 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 no. I am your fellow servant. You don't bow down to me. This is critical, folk. Your words and your thoughts become things in this world. So whatever it is in your life that you don't like, you can change it just as Jesus would do because we were, we were included in this whole adoption business and we were included to be the children of God and to have everything that our father has and he has plenty of them. So send this as a prayer ministry. I want to challenge you. You need to come boldly. I think what in Desire of say that God is disappointed when his children, that's, uh, that's page 664, I believe. God is disappointed when his children place a low estimate upon themselves. Imagine that. He is disappointed when we place a low estimate upon ourselves. Yeah, we worth something, otherwise you would not have come to die for us, she said, she argued. And she said, but he is well pleased when we ask for the greater thing upon him. When you ask for something that you are capable of receiving on your own, that does not impress God. But when you ask God for something that is bigger than you can accomplish, that's when God comes to work. As we were included in everything here. So Paul is saying, whatever God did, he placed that power to us here on this earth so that we can call those things that are not as though they are and they will come into existence. And you know something? When you get up on a bad day, and every time you get up on a bad day, you are saying, oh, oh, I feel so bad today, oh, and you are complaining, guess what? The more you complain, if you never take notice of it, try to, try to start taking note of it. The more you complain, the very thing you complain about, the more you seem to attract it into your life. 
So the best thing to do, Jesus said in Matthew 5, do not resist evil. In other words, when evil comes your way, the time you take to resist it, to fight it away, to push it away, it's occupying your mind. And because it occupies your mind, it, it, in event, in, uh, it eventually comes through your mouth and you are creating more of the same. If you don't like it, just leave it and embrace what it is you like. In other words, you and I have the ability to create in our own life what it is that we want. That's what it's saying. Now, let me, let me take you to an Old Testament story that all of us know very well. Ezekiel chapter 37, just an example. And I believe God was talking to us way back there. I saw this recently and it blew my mind. God is having conversation with Ezekiel, with the prophet Ezekiel, and God is saying to Ezekiel, God said, um, Son of man, when Ezekiel was all discouraged because he had been in bondage for so long, he wanted to be a high priest, and the age of 30 was already upon him. He was discouraged because he was still in bondage. And so here he was standing in the valley in his dream, in his vision, and the valley was filled with all the dry bones. And he saw the Lord. The Lord said, Son of man, can these bones live? God made sure he addressed him as a son of man. Can these bones live? And he said, I don't know, Lord, you know. And notice what happened next. God does not tell Ezekiel, I want you to step aside so that I can do something here since I'm the one who knows. That's not what God did. But instead, God said to the prophet, well, I know, but I want you to speak to it. I know something you do not know. I want you to speak to the boons. And Elijah, I mean, uh, uh, Ezekiel said, as he began to speak to the boons, the boons are moving together and then everything fit into place. And I don't have time to go into all of that. But after the boons came together, the, the Lord said, continue your talking, continue prophesying as the senior, the skin and all those things and breath to come into it. And before long, there was a living being in the valley. Ezekiel never knew that he had the power of life in his tongue. God could have said, let me speak to the boom. But I believe that God may have been teaching humanity a lesson. God was trying to say to, uh, uh, to Ezekiel, as I believe he's saying to us today, just as I can speak it into existence, I have given you the authority to do the exact same thing. And that is why Jesus came in the form of human being so that he can demonstrate that as a man, he can do godly stuff. So that if we believe and believe that Jesus Christ, that God is within us, that faith will lead us to be just as he is. John, 1 John 4, said, whereby, he said, hereby know ye, 1 John 4, 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, the spirit of God. Now he said, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Now when we read it, we say, okay, yeah, I believe that Jesus came in the flesh. He came as a human being. That's what the test is saying. He said, every, time, every spirit, go to verse 4. He said, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because Listen, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In other words, if you believe that Jesus has come in the flesh, which flesh? Yours. If you believe that Jesus dwells in you, that's what it's saying. Now it said, because I know that because from verse 4, it said, you are of God. Not only did you believe that Jesus came as a man 2,000 years ago, but Jesus came as a man. He dwelling in me. He uses this humanity of mine as a vessel in which he dwells. So now God is saying, you are of God. Then we jump to, to, to verse 17. We jump to verse 17. Notice what he's saying in verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we, have, we may have boldness in the day of judgment because, listen to this, because as he is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. He didn't say, so shall we be. He says, so are we in this world. So we also were included, folk. 
We are the most powerful uh, created being on this planet. God has given us his anointing. That anointing is supposed to move us to make things happen. And yes, we make things happen every day in our life. It's just that we are not taking note of it because most of the things that we have happening in our lives, we don't even know now. I have with me here a cell phone. This cell phone, a few years ago, it, it was not in the system, it was invisible. But Steve Jobs, the creator of the Apple phone, he thought about it. It was in his mind. And because of a thought, the moment he became conscious of it, it surfaced into the physical reality. In other words, if Abraham days, if they had thought about cell phone or they had thought about flying, if somebody in Abraham or, or generation had thought about doing that, they would have flown on the plane, they would have had a cell phone, they would have had everything that we had. There are much, much more to be brought to bear. But the only thing, and this is what I want you to understand, that when you think about it, you will get it. It was Napoleon Hill, not even a Christian man, Napoleon Hill in his uh, all-time book, uh, um, um, uh, forget uh, Napoleon Hill, but anyway, his book is called the, the Something of Riches. Anyway, in that book, he said, he said, if the mind can conceive it, and believe it, it can achieve it. Jesus Christ said that long before Napoleon Hill, and here's what Christ said. Christ said, whatsoever ye desire when you pray, believe that you have it and it shall be done. We will unpack that tomorrow. May God bless you. Have a good night. And good morning. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Mani. Can I ask that you pray for us and close the session, please? Our Father and our God, thank you for including us. Thank you, Lord, for including us into this wealth of creation that you have made and for entrusting us with everything. As we are going through this week, help us to realize that we are made for more, that you created us to be like you. We are your ambassadors on this earth and you want us to do things that only you can do. So those who do not know you will see us and say, how did you do it? And we will say to them, it's easy. Just trust our maker. He will entrust you. He has already entrusted all of us. All we have to do is just believe it and make it come to fruition. Thank you for this prayer group. Thank you for all those who are listening from everywhere around this, this globe to, uh, tonight here and also morning and afternoon from wherever they are. May you continue to bless them. May they go throughout the day realizing who they are, that God has given them immense power, even as it comes to healing, where they can even speak healing to themselves and to others into this world. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen.